In this tutorial, you will learn how to make a Raspberry Pi program start on boot. So to make a program start on boot, we first have to create a program actually, and I have created one here. The name is unsurefileexists.py. So this is a Python program and you can see the code is this one. So basically I check if there is the required file so a file named require file here on the home directory if it's not here i create it and write ok in it so this is a good example of when to make a program start on boot let's say you need this file when you boot the raspberry pi then you create a program to create the file and then you make the program start on boot you can see i also have the shebang line with python 3. so if i run this code python 3 with unsure file exists now i have required file here and then what's in that okay so now i'm going to remove the file so it's not here anymore and so to make sure that it's working when the program starts on boot we are simply going to check if that file is here now what i'm going to do is make sure that this script is marked as executable so i'm going to do chmod plus x ensure file exists so now it's in green so this is better when you have a script that you want to run as an executable that you make it executable and now well how to make this start on boot we are going to use the functionality named systemd so you can go on so cd slash lib slash systemd slash system okay Let's do clear and ls. And you can see we already have a lot of files there and many of them end with dot service. Okay, and we are going to create a new one. So you go on lib systemd system. So let's create a new service file. Okay, so if we create a new file here, a dot service file, it's going to be executed when we boot the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to use sudo, okay, because if you don't use sudo, you will get the permission denied error because you are in the slash lib folder, okay, here. You are not in your home directory. So sudo and then touch, ensure, let's name it ensure file exists, okay, dot service. So you can name it as you want, okay. Doesn't have to be the same name as the Python file. Just make something that is explicit. Okay, I press enter, I have a new file, and now I'm going to do sudo again. And I'm going to use nano, so you can use any text editor you want. I'm going to use nano to modify the file. And of course, make sure you use sudo, or else you won't be able to save the file later. Press enter, and now I am in the file. So here, what you can do is uh, just follow along what I'm going to write. You just need to basically repeat the same structure and use the same tags to create your own service. So after that, you can just repeat what I did here and it's going to work for any service. So first, you are going to write with brackets unit like this. On a second line, you can add description equal. So this is the description. This is not so important, but this is for you and other people, basically, when you check the service, you can better understand what it is about. So this is a description for human. So you can put, for example, unsure file exists on boot. Okay, that's not so important. And then you have after equal, and you can write multi dash user dot target. Okay, so after we basically tell when the service should be executed and you can choose the multi-user target. This is a pretty common one. And well, I'm not going to go into too many details, but with this, that's going to be good. Your service will be executed on boot. And then you can add service with brackets on the new line exec start equal. And this is the most important thing here is the command you are going to execute. So what command the service is going to execute when it's called. And so let's go back here. In the home directory, we have the ensure file exist.py. So we want to run 
that file with Python 3. The thing is that we can't just write Python 3 and that file, we need to provide the complete path for both the command and the file. What do I mean by complete path? So Python 3 actually. When you write Python 3, it's not this exact command that gets executed. What you can do is you can use which, which will give you actually the complete path for any given command. So which Python 3 and you get slash user slash bin slash Python 3. This is really what gets executed. So now you can copy this and paste it inside the file with control shift and C and control shift and V. I'm adding a space. And then I need to provide the complete path for the file. So I can do PWD, which gives us here the path for the current folder. So copy and paste. I add a slash. And then I copy this right here. And I have my complete command. Okay, on a new line, I'm going to type user. Okay, and this is also super important is with which user do you want to run that command? Okay, because you may have a different user or you may want to run the command with the root user, okay, with the admin. So here we want to run the command as pi, okay? You can do who am I? You are the pi user, you can see here also. So I want to run the command as the pi user. Okay, and finally, a last one, you can do install like this with brackets and wanted by is equal to and you can also write multi user dot target and your service is now complete so if you create a new service well you can just change the description here and change the uh, command you want to run okay maybe the user and now i'm going to save the file on nano okay control s and control x to exit okay so now the file is here but it's not because it's here that it's going to run. So we need to enable it first. Okay, I'm going to do clear. So I'm going to do sudo system. So I can actually go back here. Okay, sudo systemctl. That will be the command. And actually, I'm first going to do a daemon reload. All right, and now I'm going to enable so sudo system ctl enable so you have the command enable and then you can just type the name of the service ensure you can press tab and this is the service file you have created okay inside the system d uh, repository so now it is found automatically and you can press uh, enter and you can see created symlink etc etc which means that the service is now enabled so let's check again here. Let's do ls. Okay, we don't have the uh, file here. We don't have the required file. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do shutdown and reboot. Okay, so I'm using VNC. So this is what looks like on VNC. I'm going to wait until the Raspberry Pi reboots. Okay, so now my Raspberry Pi has uh, successfully reboot. I can go here open a new terminal and do ls and you can see here we have the required file with the text ok so the service worked and now every time you boot your raspberry pi the service will be called and inside the service you have the command to run that script now one thing to know is that so you can enable the service and it's going to be called every time you boot but maybe you want also to disable the service and in this case, it's super simple. So you have sudo systemctl. You have seen enable, but you have also the command disable, okay? And you also provide the name of the service. So you do this and you can see removed. So it removed the link to the service. So now the service is disabled. And when you boot your Raspberry Pi, this is not going to be called again. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Raspberry Pi step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Alright, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.